the same time um hopefully it's going to oh god i don't know what happened here uh ooh i need to start again then hey so i don't know i think i have to keep moving between cameras but these are all the ingredients for the paneer kati roll um this is the roti um here is the paneer that has been cubed that's what cottage cheese paneer looks like it's different than uh the like the the cottage cheese that you get here there's like some thinly sliced onions there's coriander and mint chutney there are green chilies that have been soaked in lime juice and coriander powder and there's a egg that has been whisked and ready to go and uh, the masala that i used was the tandoori masala you can make it uh, on your own at home but i decided to use uh, this uh, so here this is my uh, manya if you can hold it by light do my daughter is going to help me um so this is like the roti and the traditional way of doing it is you take it and you beat an egg over it and kind of almost like an omelet you just place it on top and then while this is being done i'll just like turn it on low i'm going to quickly cook the paneer and this has been marinated in yogurt tandoori masala and uh, uh like some other like coriander and other spices and i will absolutely be putting the recipe down uh through the frick so you are going to get a chance to see that so we just cook it gently a lot of people like to cook the onions in it also i like the onions raw and they are anyway being savicheed in uh, um i like i'm doing the ceviche in uh, lemon juice so um i don't like it cooked and uh, the paneer has to get like really cooked it has garlic in it uh, it's been marinating for over half an hour and i cubed it but my brother who's a amazing chef actually told me that i should cut it thinly because then it marinates and the flavors are much better and it's tastier to eat but i haven't done that i just uh, sliced it here for you guys to see and now i am going to go to my live here okay. i don't know why but my live for some reason on both the uh both the phone and uh, the ipad are not working i'm not that technologically savvy uh they both working yeah i think so. oh awesome so um anyhow uh manya can you concentrate on showing that mm -hmm. while that's getting cooked um and we can talk about <sighs> what an inspiration frida was and i actually was like a little disturbed because i read this quote by somebody who talked about how uh is this live manya i don't know maybe i don't think so is that live yeah this one's live okay Let me just go back here and try and put this live. For some reason that one is not working, but anyway, I can talk here. It's not a big deal. Um, so uh, it was interesting to hear that you know because she dressed a certain way, people took her art less seriously, and I was kind of offended by that because like, why does a woman have to explain how she dresses and what kind of jewelry she wears and how does that affect her art? She was a fantastic artist i think in many ways she was much better than diego uh, riviera who was much more like of course it's a man's world right so but i think she was a revolutionary in her time and uh, not only for the mexican um she participated in the political aspects of it but also because uh you know her whole persona the way she carried herself the way she dressed the clothes she wore the jewelry she wore and uh, how like you would never looking at her know that this woman had suffered 30 surgeries had had miscarriages like she just carried herself with such grace i think if i can be half the person frida was i would really think myself to be lucky um and uh, that got me a little emotional there but um so cooking is still on and i think the reason i decided to do the paneer kathi rolls and um 
Many of the comments coming in. If anybody is asking questions, am I live or no? Yeah, we're live. Okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody is there or not, but uh, anyway, uh, the one thing uh, which was really interesting when I was looking through her photographs online, actually, I'd come. This was a while ago. I'd come across this uh, photograph of her in a sari. And I was wondering if she traveled to India or not. And I couldn't quite get whether she traveled to India. But through my research, I got to know that Vijay Lakshmi, who was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's sister, her two daughters, who were also participated and were uh, political figures who kind of uh, played a part in India's independence from the British, they, they were very much um, like uh, sort of, parallel to Frida in some way and one of them Nantara Segal and Chandralekha Segal I think she also went by Rita they traveled uh, to Mexico and they were actually hosted by Frida Kahlo and then they dressed her up in a sari and she there's an amazing picture of hers in that you can find it on my Instagram page and um, if I get a chance, I can also put it on the uh, the Frick Museum page if I have access to it after but uh, here, Manya can show you how the paneer is cooking. It's like, um, it really doesn't need to be cooked as much. Like it just needs to be like, you want it still soft and maybe a little bit, uh, I'm gonna increase the heat a little bit. So it's not as liquidy, but it, um, I should really have done the paneer in uh, my iron skillet and done the, <laughs> the, the paranti or the roti in the stainless steel pan. But I was so nervous. Someone asked, is that cheese or chicken? What? Someone asked, is that cheese or chicken? You can ask loudly, they can hear you. Okay. It's, uh, it's paneer, it's cottage cheese, which is very different from the cottage cheese that you get at the grocery store. It's available at the Indian store. The one, the brand that I bought, uh, I can show you an image uh, oh. of it. I will get it there, Manya. Okay. So you don't have to take the camera anywhere else. Uh, it's by Haldiram. I'm very fortunate when I move to this country, I kind of get a lot of these ingredients here, uh, which is so much easier than people who used to. You can make your own paneer also. You have to kind of heat um, uh, the, what do you call it, milk and you uh, put lemon juice in it and then that's how the paneer is made. But now this is almost ready. Uh, so as I have told you, there's a coriander chutney that goes into it. Manya, it would be great if you uh, yeah. showed the coriander chutney. This is the chutney and you can focus on this. So you just put the chutney on, like almost like a sort of a sauce. And you can assemble this on top as well. Um, and then you put the paneer that has cooked inside it like as a filling right and you can even do this with chicken it comes out really good with chicken but just make sure that you shred the chicken so they are not big pieces but it's shredded and then uh we all like spicy food uh so you put a little bit of green chilies you can avoid that if you don't want to and then these are onions that have been uh, sliced thinly sliced and they are marinated in uh, lemon juice and they are right here so Voila, your kati roll is almost ready. So all you have to do is, I'm going to get a plate and plate it for you. And then we'll move on to our next section where we're going to kind of, I wanted to draw a parallel on how so many things from the Mexican cuisine and Indian cuisine are similar. Um, like we have something called uh, rajma, which is uh, uh, the beans and with rice and it's of course made very differently the spices are very different but uh, it's something that ooh, let's just garnish it with a little bit of this and a little bit of cilantro and boom this is our paneer kati roll uh, all right and next we are going to move on to our beef tacos and i'm going to let my daughter this is manya Hi. Um, and she is going to take it on and let's go Manya. And these are all the ingredients for it. I will just quickly, we were a little lazy. So we got the beef, uh, which is not the steak beef. There's the uh, the tortillas. Uh, there's poblano peppers. There's like a sour cream 
uh, mix, the sauce, there's shallots that have been, uh, these are just plain shallots and half the shallots are soaking in white vinegar and southwestern spice. And here's this the... This is called southwest crema. Oh, this is called southwest crema. And this is tomatoes, coriander, and Manya, you can take it on. Okay, so first we're going to take the pablino peppers and I think you should just be a little louder and clearer. Okay. I'm going to get some oil out. Just heat a drizzle of oil. And you're going to take the poblinos. Thoda aur dalo. Put them in the pan. Do you need help with like putting another pan here for the beef? Uh, Might yeah, be easier. Pan, yeah. Right. Here, one second. I'm going to move. I uh, don't know why my iPad stopped working on the live. I had set it up right here, but it just stopped. So we are going to go the old fashioned way. I'm sorry, it's going to move a lot and that might be a little uh, bit tough to see. But here we go. So basically, Here's the poblano peppers. You just have to stir it for three to four minutes until it's like a darker, like browner color because you want it to be like crispy and stuff. And you have to make sure these, the poblano peppers have no seeds in them. A few are okay, but the problem is with the seeds that it gets really, really hot. So you usually just take off the seeds and cut it down, cut it off the core. You just cut out the core, basically. Yeah, everybody's saying, uh, Veronica is saying, hey, Manya, uh, Liana said, yum. Veronica said, yum. Everybody is like excited to see. I don't know, we haven't tasted anything. Hopefully it'll taste good. Um, so while this is cooking, do you want to start the beef, Manya? It might be a good idea. Yeah, sure. So uh, while she's doing this, I'm just going to take it here so she can start uh, working on that. Is it already uh, This is like a picture of my mom and dad at their wedding. Uh, this is like a lamp, which looks part of my dad's headgear, but I swear it isn't. And this is my mom's picture at her wedding. Usually she always joins my cooking shows. Uh, the first one that I did with the hashtag not quite collective she was there and it was so much easier and um, to have her besides me but uh, well I have her pictures and that's my mother-in-law and my dad-in-law Amit's parents my husband's parents and my mother-in-law is an amazing amazing cook I've learned a lot from her so here's my little family tree and I have a book on Frida's uh, cooking these are like uh, recipes that I think her stepdaughter wrote uh, from things that were served at her wedding and other festivities. And there's a diary of Frida. Uh, I think a lot of these things are available at the Frick Museum. And this is a little Frida doll because I really uh, like everything Frida. So I'm going to move it back to Manya. She is doing the beef. I just put some sauce. I, I heated this, uh, stick, like the beef in a drink of oil, put some southwest spice on and then I'm going to put some salt just a little bit of pepper so Manya is very gentle with the amount of pepper and salt she puts I of course go crazy when I put it like I am very generous with it um, mm. it says to cook in the same pan but just for the sake of time I'm just going to cook it in two separate ones and then we can move it like do you have to take the pablano peppers out or no uh, yeah so basically once they're like I have to until they're slightly softened right which is i have that's the goal then i will add i will add in the remaining shallot that we have here because these ones are soaked in balsamic vinegar and salt so we're actually to... not balsamic they are so soaked in white vinegar no. uh, balsamic, but okay. were they supposed to be in balsamic vinegar no white I vinegar just think, i think it's just regular vinegar yeah so anyhow she is uh, at it and it is kind of interesting because beef is really not eaten in India by the Hindus. And uh, we guys, um, like uh, when I moved to the States, I remember uh, I wanted to have a burger and my husband told me cows in uh, the US are not holy. So I've always believed that. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, but it would, uh, I'm not really, we are not really uh, that religious. We kind of follow every religion. And um, so our kind of concept on uh, religion and what it stands for, politics and power is very different. But 
so anyhow so uh, the, instead of beef you can also use chicken you can also i've had like really yummy tacos that were made with okra so you can uh, okra is called bhindi in india and you can uh, take the okra dice it and kind of cook it with spices coriander um cumin powder salt pepper a little bit of turmeric uh, and red chili powder and then you can actually use that as a filling for your tacos as well it comes out really good um so now i'm just going to add in the remaining shallots she's adding in the shallots to the poblano peppers hi carolina how are you i have mania cooking with me and she's wearing like a frida t-shirt not fragile like a flower fragile like a bomb i thought it was amazing that's what uh, that's also something that we need to pass on to from generations to generations not only to our daughters but also our sons so they learn to kind of respect women and understand that uh women and men are sort of equal and are supposed to be viewed with with that eye um and which uh, which kind of was interesting because uh frida's relationship with diago was so in some ways equal because he really honored and liked her like you know he really promoted her work but at the same time he was like it was all about him he was a narcissist and the focus was always on him so the beef is cooking uh and i think Manya, how are your poblanos doing? Uh, I just have to wait until they're lightly browned. Um, okay. Softened for so basically about two to three minutes more. Okay. And I'm just gonna turn off the heat and transfer them to a bowl. Okay. I can help you transfer them to a bowl, and then if you want to move the beef into that, yeah, you can think, do that. Yeah, I think I might move the beef into this. Right. Yeah, but first I have to wipe out the pan when I do that. Okay. Uh, so if anybody knows me, um, <laughs> they know I'm big into jewelry. and uh, i i just love big chunky jewelry and i think i'm like channeling frida through that i feel and in honor of that i really wore like this massive necklace <laughs> which i think is too big almost uh and i can show you um i picked it up from a street in uh, in delhi uh, every time i travel to india that's something that i do i pick up jewelry and clothes and things which which are like really truly um Indian, and I really like to uh, give them a new life uh, uh, with the way they are worn and uh, presented. So I am going to move the camera back onto her. So this might take like a couple more minutes. I think I'm just gonna raise the heat a little bit more just so it gets done quicker. Yes, I think it was uh, on. Was it on low? It was Maybe on six. Okay. I just raised it to high, so it's all the way up. and it, i i like if you could smell this i it's like amazing like the smell is so rich um i know you might want to stir the beef for a second oh, yes. i'll i'll do this so we're going to just switch rolls she can move the beef because i think the beef would have cooked quicker on the larger pan but but i think it'll cook pretty fast once it starts um just a little bit more time and that should be done soon Right. And transfer over the beef just so it's. Yeah, I think a lot of like uh, the cooking uh, live is one hour, but it the prep time is so much. Um, so it takes a long time to get everything ready, and you want it to come out really good. <laughs> Should be done in a couple minutes. But uh, we are not professional cook. Anyhow, um, so again, I'm going to like. Uh, I did want to like uh, like Manya what were you reading about Frida that was like so inspiring to you about her like how she changed her date or year of birth rather right so uh, so basically people thought that she changed her date of birth because she wanted to be seen younger but the actual real reason is so it was line up with the Mexican revolution because um like that just shows how far she'll go to incorporate her heritage into her life which is I find really inspiring like I know that like in today's world people sometimes like shit off their heritage. I've done that before actually. I've kind of like kind of just like kind of pushed my heritage to the side just to fit into social norms, but she just like kind of stood out in her own way how she like 
incorporated her heritage into every little thing she's done. So how do you how do you feel differently now about like was it like what changed your sort of mind on that like to embrace your heritage and to embrace where you come from like what made you do that? Well, as I'm growing up, I've seen a bunch of social media figures and like artists who have influenced me by showing me that like it's like okay to be your own self like you shouldn't kind of um shy away like just to like fit a stereotype like when i was um in the when i was in elementary school uh we used to, i used to bring indian food to school and some kids would say ew that's gross so i kind of stopped bringing it and i would start going through regular things like pasta or sandwiches and oh mania i can i interrupt on that because i think you didn't really stop taking it from what i remember maybe once or twice you might have done that but i don't have any memory of it i remember you told me that you told them that uh, it's really good taste it yeah i most of my friends tried it like now now that i'm in middle school there's a lot more kids in my school and a lot of them have like have gotten to the point where they embrace other people's cultures and stuff so like i know a lot of my friends they like indian food and they always find it like really interesting when i have some so it's not like it's um almost like you have to hide stuff anymore it's like more open and it's like and since we have so many more people it's more diverse so you can hang out with people you think are right for you right and and uh, just to uh, like put perspective both manya and i had a unibrow growing up and uh, it's so interesting that when manya was in school one of the boys used to always tell her that you know when you have facial hair that's dark it shows up so she had a unibrow and she had a mustache and he used to keep telling her are you a man why do you have a mustache and like it had reached a point where i as a mom felt that she was being bullied and um and i really wanted to kind of uh like i was ready like to make whatever changes needed to be made whether it was uh, having her eyebrows threaded or wax so that she won't have to go through this uh, but she was actually manya has like taught me a lot in that aspect because she was like i'm not going to do that he has to learn and um, the school counselor i got in touch with her she spoke to the kids talked about how different skin colors and darker hair show up on skin um, whereas if you have blonde hair it really doesn't show up but it's kind of so interesting that this sort of um i uh, still remember a very close friend of mine had visited manya when she was born and the first thing he told me was wow she has like her I, she has one eyebrow and it's kind of so interesting that um transfer the beat okay it's so interesting that people think like uh physical features and the way you look is so big and such an important aspect uh and i think frida was like one of those people who kind of broke those norms do you want to move it into the other pan manya so just for the sake of time we were we are moving it here exactly aliana you nailed it that boy needs to change not i'm going to put the vent on yeah at low because it's smoking up right here and uh, manya these beef tacos are really popular in our house so she she does a great job of the way she makes them and i think uh, the difference between manya and me is that i don't follow recipes i look at a recipe and i modify it and she follows the recipe to the t uh and kind of really masters it and after that she's ready to adapt it which is maybe a smarter way because my food sometimes comes out really good and sometimes it's really bad um you uh yeah so the beef is being done and um now what are you going to do now manya once the beef is after i make the beef it's going to be done soon mom can you stir it yeah um so next what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to um wait just let this go for a little bit mm -hmm. and then basically what i'm what i have to do is that i have to return all like all of the poblano pepper and i think it's done shallots. the beef is done so i'm just going to add this in back in yeah and then mix it a little bit to turn it to low heat and then um just i'm going to wait till you're done with that wait and here's ishan he's dressed up in a frida uh, carlo t-shirt he is excited to be also there do you want do you have anything to say ishan hi hi mm -hmm. and he's my uh, uh 
Pakistan and I think we've been having a lot of conversations about how Frida embraced like she was sort of like uh, and I, I would actually ask Manya to talk about this like Manya can you tell me a little bit more about how uh, how, how do you guys at your age and school where view gender like is it a binary thing where it's only male or female or do you view it in well, I think when kids grow old, like, as when kids are younger, they just view it um, as, like, just male or female. Like, you're born as either male or female, and you can't, like, that's just, like, the way it is. Right. Like, I don't think they really think about all the different types. Like, for example, when I was younger, I, okay, I'm just going to microwave this for 30 seconds, but um, I didn't know that there, I thought, I didn't know that there were more than two genders. I knew that there was different ways you could interpret your sexuality but i didn't know about the different types of genders i didn't know that you could um you could be like transgender or you could be gender fluid i didn't know what any of that was so as i grew older i like because i feel like when you're younger a lot of people try to shelter you from the world which i think is good in some ways because then they're not then you're not like you're not going to be traumatized but I think in some ways they need to let you see how the, today's world is and how like sometimes like how bleak it is like because I remember when I was in the in elementary school I didn't realize how that right. was. Do you want to just make one mania for the interest of time sure. and right like we can do that later yeah. doesn't so matter. Basically, I, I just took a damp paper towel and I heat I put the wrap the tortilla in that and I heated it in the microwave for thirty seconds. So then I combined the tomato and the vinegarized shallots. shallots. And what I'm going to do is that basically we're going to start with the beef. So you and the vinegarized shallots had a little bit of salt and uh, they also had sugar in them. Um, so just so you know. Uh, thank usually, you, Maritza. Maritza says I love Manya. <laughs> Man, usually, we love you too, Maritza. Yeah. But I usually don't put sugar in it. Like it's your choice. Like I personally don't think it needs it. When there's usually sugar in recipes, I think it's kind of not. And we have a taco serving. Can you get that, Ishan? If you can help us with that, the white plate has the the taco. Yeah. Can you get that? So I'm just gonna put. I just put the beef at the bottom with poblano peppers, and I put the salsa. It's it's considered to be salsa, and this is uh this uh Southwest crema. I'm just gonna drizzle it on the top. Ooh, I think Ishan is ready to eat it. Yeah. You are gonna, like, whoa. We're going to take a little bit of cilantro and just sprinkle it. And again, another parallel between Mexican cooking and Indian cooking is that a lot of like cilantro is used in a lot of dishes and here. So I'm going to show you a parallel plating of, I know there should have been more tacos here, but let's just for the interest of time, this is what we have. And um, we have the beef tacos and we have the paneer kati rolls mm -hmm. and uh, Manya do you want to talk about your kids books and like how you so, got into art and like I actually love these books I have I got them I think three or four years ago um so basically it it has um different artists and they basically tell the story of them as they were kids so this is I have Frida Kahlo open here this is how I learned about most artists like how I learned their like life story and so this is kind of um her how like this is talks about her father because she was very very close um to him and she would pick up other jobs he like because when she she used to never want to get out um of her bed when she was paralyzed uh, like when she had had the disease uh, the accident yeah, she the actually accident. had an accident, yeah, the accident the yes accident, um, right when she had the disease on her legs so he uh, polio um, she had yeah, polio at a young like at six or something yeah she so she's six she developed a serious medical condition um Can you get me my coffee? so basically he kind of tried to cat uh try to exercise her so for example like she's showing here rowing a boat mm -hmm. then he kind of when she emerged from her recovery and she was stronger um but basically it was very thinner it was thinner so she wasn't as like healthy right but she used she loved f like bot botan uh, botanical she loved painting she loved and it was interesting because she was really not an artist she was i think going to medical school i don't know if that's in your book but i when i was researching her I talked about how she wanted to go to medical school and then yeah. after she had her accident 
at the trolley and then she was sitting at home she could kept painting on her cast and uh, then like there was no space on her cast so her father and mother gave her an easel i know i have a collection of pestle and mortals mortals <laughs> mortars here but um, anyway she uh, they gave her an easel and uh, can you face it this way manya so we can see um, and um, and that's how she got into it and then she went and met diego and asked her if she was any any good if she could she should pursue it and not that he shouldn't look at her and give her an opinion because she was a woman and he wanted to get into bed with her but more because she was authentically a good painter so they also have this is the special easel that her mom made for her so she could paint um um so that's that's she basically she's a self-taught artist she didn't learn right she didn't go to school for it um and then she started it says so basically this is a book about artists and their pets so it shows like all the different pets she kept so she never had pets as a child so she featured them in her paintings so there were spider monkeys um there was several mexican hairless dogs mm -hmm. um parrots um and then parakeets macaws chickens sparrows eagles and a dainty fawn so and then she had her, her favorite dog i don't want to get this wrong so i'm just going to you can read it there but um it comes from a language spoken by the aztecs so it means god dog so it's do god's dog so that's basically like a little bit of story of her pets mm -hmm. and uh, manya the like do you know the dad and i have visited the frida carlo the blue house yeah the azul the casa azul uh, ishan do you want to taste this uh yeah sure. so ishan is going to taste our uh, paneer kathi roll hopefully it's not too spicy and he can be the judge of what do you think mm it's good yeah do you like it and now do you want to taste the beef taco yeah sure. <laughs> you normally i would never let you eat like that but I mean, so what do you think they're good they're really good yeah which is better i think this one oh <laughs> Okay show me your uh, Frida t-shirt. Wow. That looks groovy. Yes, Manya is going to show us some other games no, and I things have, that she has which I are have quite a few different games. I always get these when I go to the museum. So this one is Guess the Artist. And so basically they give you three pictures. Mm -hmm. So that so this is Casa Azul uh um her house. Casa Azul? Yeah, and this is a spider monkey I'm pretty sure and this is her unibrow. So um basically it says it has little quotes and how they're important to the artist on them it's a great game i hope the frick has it and maybe you can buy it there um they also have this game which is the manifesto it's the art of movements game so it's the artist who is who so basically i just pulled this one out i didn't like i'm not going to explain the game right now but um basically this is um it has like little cards with artists what they did and what their main topics were so it has her and it has surrealism so it just basically kind of has the when you play the game it'll make more sense but it's it's a really fun game you should get it and then i have the art game um but i didn't take out a uh, frida carlo based one out for this one but it's basically like the artist top score so you basically just have to like choose um different types like you'll have the different types of artists throughout the game and yeah so that's basically what i have okay, awesome i don't know what it said it's uh, paused because i'm not using the app and i am um i hope we are still on and uh, then i would like to take this time to kind of we have a show coming up at the frick uh, i don't know i hope i get the date right it's may 31st and where we are going to be sharing our own intimate portraits i'm not necessarily sharing these but this is of my mom when she was a little girl and everybody who looks at this says manya looks like my mother um so it's kind of interesting how uh, generationally you know kids inherit so many things from their grandparents and uh, this is a photograph of actually my mother and her family and i thought it was really kind of it resonated with me with frida's uh, picture of her family except of course here nobody is dressed uh, like i thought 
it was amazing that Trida decided to dress in her dad's suit. And her relationship with her father was so amazing because uh, he like not only started doing more commercial work to support her, but he also, um, he also um, kind of was like instrumental in her becoming the person she was. She was very close to her dad. And he sort of embraced her identity because she was kind of gender fluid. She wore different sort of clothes and he really embraced her and let her be that. And in that time and moment, I think it was revolutionary that he let her do that. So this is another family picture of ours. Uh, it was taken in my grandmother, my nani, my mother's mom's house in Masuri, which is where she lived. I know it's not a very clear picture. This I had shown earlier is my parents wedding picture the lamp on top now honestly does not belong on my dad's head but um, it's just a badly taken photograph but we will be sharing our intimate portraits uh, at the Frida Carlo museum and um, so please be there I hope you'll be able to see the show I think if the if I get the dates right it's May um, mid-May um, and uh, there are 13 collective members every Saturday we do a cooking show and uh, so please join in ask your questions uh, May 11th thanks uh, Maritza May 11th the show opens um, uh, it's I think it's going to be beautiful because through these cooking series I think we as the not white collective have also been learning so much about each other I think the one thing that COVID has taught us is to really, the, even though we hate this digital platform, it really forces us and uh, we really listen. So it's like amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rahul. He joined me from Singapore. He's my um, my diaper friend, as they call it, Langoti Ayar. He's like we've known each other for, I don't know, 30, <laughs> most of my life I've known him. So it's amazing that he's been able to join. And... Uh, I am not sure how much more time I have and if there is more time then I am happy to talk some more about the Frida exhibit. Um, can anybody tell me if there's more time or am I uh, ready to go? I'm not quite sure. I don't want to uh, just be cut off mid-sentence. But here's my family. This is uh, Ishan. Hi. Uh, and he wants to say hi to everybody and that's Manya. She was the, the chef who hi. did... Uh, the beef tacos and I did the paneer kati rolls. Manya was actually very disappointed because she wanted me to to make butter chicken, which is her favorite, uh, and one she's of one of her favorite Indian dishes. And she really wanted me to make that, but I thought it would be too time consuming and it would be really hard to uh, maneuver that. Manya, we have twenty more minutes. I would love for you to talk about like what do you think about like. Uh, you know what's going on in the world today with like the hate crimes that are happening. Uh, well, I feel that it's not that we haven't moved forward in time, but I just think that we've kind of moved backward over the past couple of years. Like, like the amount of kind of hate that's risen up in the world just shows how much like, for example, Muslim, like if you're a Muslim girl under 18, you can't wear a hijab like in France, like that's moved so far back in time. They're questioning your right to uh, get an abortion. They're, the, um, Amy Connery Barrett was questioning rights um, for the LGBTQ community to get married, which is disgusting. Um, and she was also like, there was like, there's the rise of Asian hate crimes is appalling and how that the officer who, um, the guy who killed the six Asian women was defended by the officer saying he had a bad day and the guy who actually killed them said he had a sex addiction and they were causing his problem. And then the the like like the black community has gone through so much and apparently there was a five year old child, five or eight, I forget, but he was at a bus stop and he picked up a flower, like any could if you saw a pretty flower, you would pick up a flower and you wanted to smell it. He picked up a flower and he was arrested for um, destroying property. So and yet there was. Oh, when two, did this happen? It was a while. Uh, I think like a couple a uh, couple weeks ago. But there was also two girls who, um, like harassed a Pakistani Uber driver, and they were not put in jail. Yet they could put a five year old who smelled a flower in jail, which I find appalling because 
that should not be going on in today's world. And I think that we're just going back in time and there's like so much hate and like it's kind of um, sad about how much, how we're going, like we're just not moving forward. And even though we try, there's always people coming from every direction trying to stop like the amount like unity and like connection to each other like they just don't want to be equal which i find just yeah it's not it's not fair right no. like uh, like and i think if we look back at frida's history for she was like such a feminist right she carried herself with such poise she she owned her unibrow she owned her mustache she just owned herself and she also uh, wore like indigenous clothes. I don't want to mess the tribe. Taco, like her mom was a mix. Her mom was um, uh, uh, I'm blanking out on the name. It's I think it's called Mestina, which is your mix from indigenous people and someone from European descent. But her mom was um, like Mexican, and she was from an indigenous an indigenous tribe. I think it was called Tenet. I forget the name. Tahuana. I, I, I yeah, Tahuana. I, I don't want to say it wrong. But it's interesting because she could have embraced her Europe, European heritage and uh, because that would have sort of upped her level in society as in most of these countries, including India, where the colonial past, like people who speak better English, who kind of adapt to the British ways of thinking, are always looked upon more uh, as superior and more educated. Um, then people who, uh, you know, imbibe their Indianness. So I think she could have gone that path, but she really went all out. She wore clothes that were very indigenous. Her jewelry was like that. Her persona was like that. And I think she took it to a whole level where she contemporized it in various ways, right? Um, she was like a force and she had miscarriages and uh, she also had a very, very sort of flamboyant life and uh, she didn't believe in uh, even though Diego and she were married they both had multiple affairs she had uh, lovers who were women she had lovers who were men and I think I know Diego was jealous of her male lovers but I think they had an re open relationship and uh, and I don't even know in some ways because they fought so much and their marriage was so turbulent that why did they decide to marry, get divorced, and then mar get married again a year later. So it's uh, all that uh, kind of, I question the institution of marriage and why is that also necessary in this whole process? Like if you can live happily together or move about, like whatever, it's like freedom. It's, in some ways, it's kind of going back to the roots, how we, uh, hi Fran, um, where we've really come from. Like I don't think when we were, uh, like when we were created, I don't know whether Adam and Eve is the correct story or however, but like, did we even, there was no such institution. So why did this happen? Right. It makes me question that. Um, and here I'm going to ask Vanya some other questions on. So what do you, what did, what did you feel was the most interesting part of today's cooking? Did you learn something about the paneer kati roll? Yeah, I, when I usually eat the paneer kati roll, I eat it with the egg and the chicken and the onions, but I do not usually have it with the chutney and the um, spice because I, sometimes I have problems with too much spice, but um, I, I, now I'm eager to try it because it looks very good, so. Yeah, do you want to say something, Ishan? Um, well, maybe if, um, so some things have been going on in the world or something so there's been a lot of stuff towards LGBTQ community or something so a few days ago um there was it also happened I saw on Manya's story uh or like what Manya just said about the black um boy who did nothing but if it was a white boy then nothing would have happened but just because of his skin color then it's sad because it happened and there was also um, one Muslim girl walking, and she got her her, her job taken off. Am I saying it correctly? Yes, you are. And then, um, 
and then the and then she got harassed and the police did nothing about it and um so in like how how do you think both of you Anya, if you can join here, like, what do you think, like, you guys and your generation, including your white friends and uh, friends of color, like, how can you, uh, as the next generation, what can you do to change the world? Like, what do you think is the call to action? I think what our generation is mostly trying to do is that they're trying to, like, change. So they're doing a lot of, like, peaceful protests and... Um, I know that we're speaking out against a lot of stuff and you're trying to educate other people, but there's always going to be those people in the world that just don't understand. Like, I know some of my friends actually, um, just don't understand some topics and they disagree with me on a lot of certain things. So I never talk to them with politics. Um, so there's just like, there's certain things, there's certain people that are just never going to change the way they see the So world. can I question one thing? Can you turn the vent off? We don't need it. Uh, so my, uh, like my question to you is like people who don't listen to you and don't think the way you do, uh, is it not important for them to kind of get engaged in this conversation and no, see the I other think, side? No, I think it's important. It's just that they, they've, some people have reached the point where they just kind of they don't even listen to your ideas right um like for example like there's a kid uh there's okay so we were we were reading romeo when we started romeo and juliet we were talking about how shakespeare was a pretty big advocate for feminism and social and changing social norms so if you notice that juliet in the story has a lot of power when usually women are confined in this little space throughout the story um but there was this one kid in my class and um I'm not going to say his name, but he basically, my teacher had to talk to him because we, she said, she said, if you don't agree with this, I, that's your opinion, but I need you to have an open mind. He was not having an open mind. He was not, he was pretending like. The what was his problem? I, he just has certain views about the world that no one, like I personally don't agree with. Um, but he just doesn't have the idea that men, men and women should be equal and he just doesn't like the protest for feminism like i know that we were talking about what so at the beginning of the conversation we were talking about what ways um people perceive feminists and feminism is not just the fight for women's rights it 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 is mainly on that yes but if you look up the actual definition it's the fight for equality for all genders Mm -hmm. So, um, we were talking about how people see feminists and my friend, Juliet, she's, uh, she's also a feminist. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But, um, she, she <laughs> I wouldn't take names. <laughs> she was saying, um, she was saying, we were just like, we were like, she's a feminist, but she was like, we were talking about how some ways people perceive feminists. And she said that, um, she's heard some people call feminists feminazis because they're trying to advocate for women's rights. And I don't, I think that's first of all such a horrible comparison like you cannot compare like anything like the term nazi is just horrible as a whole like just i would never use that towards someone or against someone in any way um but we were talking about how like they feel that like women will do anything to get anywhere they want and like i think it's just that those people who think those ideas like they don't realize that we're not violent and we're not going to we're not trying to like it's not that we want men to be below us we want men and women to be on the same path but sometimes you have to fight harder for people who are below yeah. to get on the same path right the, the problem is the thing is though i sometimes question this and i don't want this to sound weird in any way but i always think that like why like when people are like for example when women got the right to vote i was like well why should that be celebrated like not that it's amazing but I think it's like, why should there have been progress to have been made from the beginning of time? Like, why was there, why was progress needed to be made? Like, for example, I personally do not worship Christianity, but um, the story of Adam and Eve. Eve takes a bite of the apple, I'm pretty sure, that she's not supposed to take up. And that is, first of all, directing that it's the woman's fault. It's not talking about the man in any way. It was the woman's fault because she took a bite of the apple that she was not supposed to. 
Right. So do you follow any religion or you believe in the equality of all religions or you don't believe in any religion? I'm not really sure. I mean, I just don't think there's like cert I just don't really think about it. It's just not it's not necessarily a huge impactful part of my life. Like Hinduism is probably if I did say I followed a religion, it would probably be Hinduism mm-hmm. most likely just because like the stuff I do is based off of it. But um I like some stuff like the pujas and prayers, the ho- holidays I celebrate, all of that. But right. I just don't think that I really believe in any religion necessarily. I don't even know if there is an all-powerful being cuz like I just think it's an idea that people have out there and it's just kind of hard to like see if it's truth or not. Like I just don't have I don't believe that God isn't there, but I don't believe that he is there in right both ways. Right. And I know that when you went to the JCC you thought you were Jewish. Yeah. And then when you went to Carlo at the Montessori you thought you were Catholic. I never thought I was Catholic. You did? You did. Oh. And uh, so you have kind of adapted because based on where you were you I don't know if it was about fitting in or you I think like every religion has good and bad and the idea is to take the good and uh, not make it the power uh, I think what people try to do is it's a way to kind of make to rule people based on fear and that's what is kind of tragic right Yeah So thank you so much for listening I know we guys talk a lot uh as a family and oh I don't know what I did there's my dog she wants to be in there too that's Ginger Ginger wants to say hi she's also a feminist um and uh, thank you so much uh for listening to us for uh, having us talk we have a lot of conversations in our house about different issues uh we all um sort of agree um and yeah, like have open conversations about whether it's about gender it's about uh religion it's about race um like what's going on and how we can help change the world i think as a visual artist um i use my medium um to kind of bring these issues to the forefront and i'm hoping as my kids grow older they will sort of embrace and whatever path they take they will um uh, uh use their voice to bring justice to the world and because we want humanity at the end of the day uh that's what is missing right and i think this uh cooking show and my doing the beef tacos with the paneer tikka masala was very much i wanted to show the parallels of how even though mexico and india are so far apart how the cuisine is so similar there is so much uh, like the cilantro is used a lot in the mexican cooking the salsa is very similar to an indian salad called kachumbar a little bit of ingredients here and there are different but it's so so i don't know if there was some travel that happened if people move from places to places or is our human beings intrinsically the same um and they sort of have the same taste buds and they kind of adapt when they see food they relate to it in a similar way based on the countries they are in and the spices that are available and what is locally there so thank you so much if you haven't had a chance do go visit the frida carlo show it is amazing her pictures i thought from her own archives actually i really connected with them a lot because they seemed i i really i'm curious about an artist i want to know what's behind the scenes what families do they come from what go what went on in their homes what made them the way they are and i was really sort of uh, really into that but i wish i had got i really wanted to get in more but i know that uh, that was the day time of no social media where everything and anything gets posted and of course those are also curated uh, social media is curated and so are uh, i think photographs that were taken through this slr uh camera those were also uh slr or whatever camera at that time they were also sort of curated because they are very posed um i wonder if there was a way to get dig in a little bit more into like i wanted more like it left me you know wanting to know more about her and i think that's an amazing job that the frick has done and um her whole portraits of nicolas uh mare like the ones he did are just gorgeous they are in color and she had an affair with him and 
and it was interesting because the affair was very open diego knew about it i'm sure he was very jealous but uh, uh but he saw her uh, through a different lens i don't know if diego ever saw her i don't know if he was threatened by her honestly because she was a much much better artist than him but how many years did it take for her to really get recognized so right like when you talk about equality and gender and all of that like what what took people to take frida carlo more seriously just because she had this aura um around her where she looked like a model that uh, she, i i have no idea why but a critic said that she couldn't be taken seriously more because of the way she dressed and uh, you know her whole persona and i kind of i am i am like uh, i was like like disgusted to read that to be quite honest i am like she should have been embraced for everything her art was beautiful her portraits are they are heart wrenching they are stunning and uh, she should have been given um a place in society in the art world much earlier than she has but ah better late than never so i'm glad uh, she is being shown her uh, photographs are being uh, embraced uh, by everybody who visits we have um, i really enjoyed it i went there with my husband and i really enjoyed that show and ah i just want to pitch in a little bit oh you need to go and see vanessa germans installations there too on grief they are amazing they are altars and like they they really move me it is like just beautiful what the frick has done how they've curated this show and they've like they have uh, like i commend them for inviting local artists to not only uh, kind of do these series cooking series and kind of include them but also the whole concept of like another local artist to be present there and i am uh, very excited that we are going to be showing our photographs from our own homes our own sort of intimate portraits uh from our families and we i would love for all of you to come and hopefully see those and uh uh we will have the recipe of the paneer kathi roll and the beef taco on the frick website once all the not white collective sisters have done their videos and uh, do not forget to tune in next uh saturday noon because henya is going to do an amazing uh uh live instagram live a uh, cooking show for uh next saturday which is april 17th thank you so much and goodbye do you guys want to say bye bye all right take care How do I save it now?